In this video, we install a Windows 10 Spring 2020 update ahead of the crowd. Hello everyone and welcome to TechFix Flicks. In this tutorial, we will install version 2004 of Windows 10 in advance of its scheduled official release. If you're watching this video after the official release, there'll be a more straightforward means of acquiring the update and we may well have published additional videos. The method we use to obtain it is that which we used for the May 2019 update, but if you're a long time viewer who's seen that video, stay with us to the end as we have some important post installation configuration options which are new to this tutorial. Purely to show our starting point, we click the start button, typing winver and pressing enter. As you can see, at this stage we're running version 1909, with an OS build of 18363.720, which is the latest stable release at the time of this video's publication. Upon completion, we'll be seeing version 2004 here. We've also installed all available patches, to ensure that they don't block our attempt to install this update. Incidentally, if you're struggling with an update which you can't remove, be sure to check out the tutorial shown on screen now and linked in the written description accompanying this video. We click OK. As this upgrade isn't entirely without risk, we'd advocate creating a system restore point here by following the instructions in the tutorial shown on screen now and again linked in the written description. With a working backup or restore point secured, we return to the desktop, again clicking the start button. We click the settings cog. Incidentally, we'll be returning to the settings menu on several occasions during this tutorial and you can reach it via the keyboard shortcut Windows key plus I if you prefer. From the settings options, we head to update and security, arriving at the Windows update screen. After the official release of the update, simply clicking check for updates will suffice, but prior to that, we have some work to do. We're going to join the Windows Insider program, so we click that option from the Windows update menu. What happens next depends upon your current setup and whether you have an existing membership of the Windows Insider program, possibly as a consequence of having followed our 2019 tutorial. In this example, we're using an entirely clean installation of Windows with an unregistered user account, purely in order to demonstrate all possible steps, some of which may be excluded from your experience. As part of the program, we're required to provide full diagnostic data to Microsoft. If you followed our setup tutorial, you'll have noticed that we advised against this on privacy grounds, so we're temporarily undoing that, although we'll reverse this during our configuration changes at the end of the tutorial. We therefore click Diagnostics and Feedback. As per our initial setup, our diagnostic data level is set to Basic and we simply select the option to change this to Full, before returning to the Windows Insider Program options where we now have enabled the option to get started. Upon clicking, we're advised that we need to link our user account to the program in order to get started and we therefore click to link an account. The default selection is the account we're logged in with, but the option exists to select an alternative account if this is your preference. With our account selected, we click to continue. As we're using a new email address, we need to verify it. An automated email is immediately sent to the account we've selected, and we therefore check our email for the security code and enter it here before clicking next. With the address verified, we need to confirm our intention to register. In addition to sharing full diagnostic data with Microsoft, the only other consequence of joining the program is receipt of the occasional email and, acknowledging this, we click to sign up. Acceptance of agreement terms is mandatory and we tick the box to confirm having read and accepted the terms of the agreement before clicking submit. Having registered, we can close the dialog. After a short pause, we choose between one of three speeds at which we can receive preview builds. The fast ring is purely for the most adventurous, at the cutting edge of Windows development. This isn't for us on this occasion, as we're looking to make a one-off jump to the new build, but no further, whereas the fast ring will leap further forward with far greater frequency. Release preview is our usual selection here, and may be the appropriate one by the time this video is released. You may wish to try this first, but if Microsoft still have yet to reach the release preview stage, follow our example by instead selecting the slow ring. As we're not yet at the release preview stage at the time of this video's creation, we're going to select the slow option and we click to confirm. One final confirmation is required before we can advance further, and doing so also requires a system reset. So we therefore click to restart now, having first made certain to save any open documents prior to restarting. The machine restarts and you'll need to log in once more, although you can bypass login permanently by following the steps in our tutorial shown on screen now and linked in the written description. 
We return to the desktop and click the start button, followed by the settings cog, returning us to Windows settings where we click update and security. Arriving again at the Windows update screen, this time we check for updates. A check takes place and our objective here is to install feature update to Windows 10 version 2004. Depending upon your configuration, your system may need to complete other updates first and if you can't install a particular update, see our tutorial linked in the written description to help remove it. If all is well, we will be advised that Windows is getting things ready. Once things are fully ready, downloading begins and depending on the speed of your connection, this may represent an opportunity to take a break. This may be an appropriate moment to highlight that this tutorial does not run in real time, purely in order to move more rapidly through the downloading and installation phases, so you shouldn't be concerned if these operations take significantly longer to complete in real time, varying from machine to machine in accordance with processing power and drive speed. Once downloading is complete, the installation phase begins automatically. Once fully installed, we are prompted to restart by clicking restart now. We can take a further break as the device restarts and configures to completion, after which a phase of working on updates commences, preparing Windows before a further login is required. We've now completed a quite significant update and you may find some issues with display, sound and other drivers, and you'll notice that our display resolution has changed here, with a welcome page displayed. As with any Windows update, there are also potential consequences for peripheral devices and we additionally encountered some issues with our Bluetooth configuration upon restart. We also found that our network share names were returned to their defaults and we've previously covered a method for rapidly renaming them in the tutorial shown on screen now. We've now closed that web page and returned our screen resolution to its usual setting. At this point, we can rerun WinVer to confirm that the update has successfully completed. We click the start button and type WinVer. Here we can see the all important confirmation that we've made the leap forward to version 2004. We're not finished yet as there are further tasks to finalise in the installation. We again click the start button followed by the settings cog once more heading to update and security. Our first task is to regain control of our update schedule by immediately opting out of future preview updates. We therefore head to Windows Insider program. In order to perform the upgrade we needed to be part of the slow ring, so we click this option with a view to changing it, amending the insider settings away from slow back to release preview before returning to settings. With the setting in this position, we'll also automatically receive the next release preview of Windows and these are typically released biannually. Here we'll use the search field to locate diagnostics and feedback settings. Whilst it was necessary to send full diagnostic data to Microsoft in order to join the Insider program, now that we've acquired our update that's no longer desirable, so we revert from full diagnostic data to basic. Returning to settings, we again return to update and security. Although we've undergone a substantial update, there are still some minor updates to collect. We click check for updates and a check is performed, with a number of updates found. Depending on when you're viewing this video, there may be more updates or different ones installed here. Once complete, our system is up to date. Now, how about reclaiming some significant disk space? We click the file explorer icon, navigating to this PC. We right click on our primary hard drive icon, typically labelled C and identified by a Windows logo. We select properties from the menu which appears, before selecting disk cleanup from the properties window. We then select clean up system files and a brief scan is performed. We scroll through the options being certain to deselect any item which we don't want to delete. For a full outline of our options here, see the tutorial shown on screen now and linked in the written description accompanying this video. Crucially, make sure previous Windows installations is selected before clicking OK. A confirmation dialog appears and we confirm our wish to delete files. Be aware of the consequence of this deletion. You won't be able to roll back to your earlier version of Windows, so you should only perform the deletion if you're confident that your current installation is stable and meets your needs. The deletion is performed and may take a little while to complete given the large volume of data to be processed. Once completed, we regain the space occupied by the previous installation, in our case reclaiming in excess of 15GB. With that, our update is complete. Be sure to check out our back catalogue and subscribe for our future projects. And we'll have more on the Windows 10 2004 update upon its official release. Thank you very much for watching this video. 
If you found it useful, please consider subscribing by clicking the logo on screen now. If you'd like to see more, there are two suggestions currently on screen. If you have a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're also welcome to follow us on Twitter. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.